what is going on beautiful people it's your boy mr mark david meyer with the fire here to share ideas and take the collective vibration higher simplified astrology mars day with mark it's a beautiful day i hope you're enjoying it today is tuesday that's what mars day means and i'm about to give you the astrology breakdown this is about to be the metaphysical weather forecast so i'm about to put you on blast to put the whole world on blast so sit back relax get your snacks and get ready because I'm about to walk you through the week. And we're going to do this every week. This is episode two. And I'm in the park. I'm out here in nature, roughly speaking. You know, so you might hear the cars going by. You might hear the people in the background. But pretty close to the camera. Got a new camera. So this should be pretty decent quality. You guys let me know how you're feeling today watching this. Let me know how the quality is. And just leave me some feedback and some interaction as we go through this, please. And thank you. If you rock with your boy, just hit the like right now, okay? But let's break it down. So today, I'm going to run you through the astrology and we'll just talk about it as we go and I can peel it back layer by layer for us. But today, as I'm filming this, the sun is at 29 degrees Gemini. That's going to mean that's the last day of Gemini season. We've got the moon at one degree Leo. It's a pretty fun day. And we'll peel it back, like I said. But Mercury is at 17 Gemini. Venus is at 13 Leo. Mars is at 18 Leo. Jupiter at 7 Taurus, Saturn at 7 Pisces in retrograde, Uranus is still at 21 Taurus, Neptune is still at 27 Pisces, Pluto is still at 29 Cap, spinning its way backwards, etc, etc. So, like I said, the beautiful thing is uh, today is the last day of Gemini. So, make way for the Cancers. Shout out to my Cardinal Water Sons. I want you to represent, let me know if you're a Cancer. My family is cancer, man. Like my brother, my sister, my mom. I grew up surrounded by cancer, so I know that energy pretty well. But it's soft, it's beautiful, it's fun. But what does this mean from an astronomy perspective? Let me tell you really quick. If you're in the Northwestern Hemisphere, the beautiful thing is that this is the summer solstice, the first day of cancer season where we're gonna be at zero. And that's a turning of the wheel, for real. So I just wanna say happy Letha to my pagans, to my Wiccans. Have a blessed Sabbath. What's cool about the summer solstice, depending on uh, your hemisphere, if you happen to be experiencing this, this is the maximum tilt towards the sun. So that's just going to mean that this is the longest day of the year, which is pretty sweet. So this is a cardinal sign, and that's Cancer. And we could break it down, but really, what I think the theme of this week is based on cancer season and all these retrogrades that we're having is that we're moving forward, but we are also releasing the past at the same time. And that's pretty cool. So cancer is a water sign. It's symbolized by the crab. Its mantra is I feel. It's ruled by the moon. And this is all about empathy, feeling what others are feeling. To even do that, if we dial it back, you have to feel your own feelings, truly. Your water element, that is how you connect. Water will take the shape and the form of any container. So if you don't connect to you, you can't connect to anybody. And that's why you will hear me, hear me, <laughs> you'll hear me every time I'm on live damn near say, open that heart, keep the heart open. Because if you close yourself off from yourself, you're gonna close yourself off from the rest of the world. Feel disconnected for some reason. It doesn't mean keeping the heart open is easy because this world is, uh, this world. So I just want to say holding love is a very strong thing to do. Shout out to you who's doing it. So connecting with our emotions is going to be a very cancer theme for the next 30 days as the sun is transiting through this constellation. Finding comfort is going to be a priority. So just know that moving forward that it's okay to chill. It's okay to relax. Your life should be comfortable in some way shape or form yeah comfort and growth are diametric but we can have the cake and eat it too and anybody who says differently must not like cake i don't know what to say you know so what another thing cancer season talks about is exploring and opening the heart and i didn't mention it briefly but there's a lot of space in there and this is the time where we get to go inside and explore this no matter what you're doing in your external world during cancer season, you just got to know that you're doing this through the heart. That's where the action is coming from. That's how the sun is being correlated right now. If you live on earth, 
be different somewhere else, but that's that's it right now. So just get with the program, make it make sense. This might bring up family matters like Urkel, you know, the the roots, the heritage, the culture that you come from, the close ones, friends and family, that might be the focus, that might be the spotlight for cancer season. So that's pretty cool. But also, I want you to think yet again, here I am. <laughs> I'm here once again <laughs> asking you to consider the desires of the heart. What does your heart want? What your heart wants might be different than what your mind wants. Have you ever gotten what you thought that you wanted and then realized you didn't even want it? Oh man, God damn, God is damn. That's really fucked up, but blam, blam, blam. So we need fulfillment. We need to go within and find peace and release. Oh yes, yes please. Today's a weird day, guys. Today, at Sun 29 Gemini, we got an in conjunction to uh, Pluto at 29 Capricorn. That's a 150. They're both at 29, 29, right? So this has been an intense day on a solar level. I don't know about y'all. That's why I wanted you to say, if you're watching this the day I'm posting it, let me know how you feel. But what this really indicates from a language perspective is deep metamorphosis, but on a personal level and maybe even a forced transformation of the ego. But there is a lot of power here, maybe misdirected. So how do we harness the power that we hold and focus it appropriately on something? Something has to give. Something must be surrendered for something to be given to you. So what is it? And that's kind of what today feels like. A lot of friction. But we're making it work, man. I've been having... I want to digress for like a minute, y'all. Because I don't know what astrological <laughs> trends is doing this. But I just want to tell you what's been happening to me. I assume this might be a Saturn retrograde thing. But I have been... My timing has been a little off lately. And it's been good at the same time. <laughs> so, there's been like probably about three appointments or maybe four at this point that I've gotten the timing wrong of but I've shown up early and then realized it was literally a day in the future or like a couple days in the future so I've been ahead of my time lately which is better than being behind my time so I like that but it's kind of weird man it's been an interesting time for Mark but let's get back to the action man one thing I saw this is a little bit obscure so you're gonna get put onto the secret let me put you on game right quick the asteroid series you know, a lot of people lay off the roids, man, but I'll tell you about the asteroids. Ceres is at a square to the sun because Ceres is in Virgo, sun is in Gemini. And Ceres is Demeter, the goddess of the harvest, the goddess of the earth, the grain. That's Persephone's mom. <laughs> I just thought she's got it going on. And this week, for real, maybe even today, because the square is perfect today. Same thing with that Pluto angle. This really talks about a need for grounding, yeah, 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 eyes. <laughs> I just put the words together, yeah, eyes. I'm just gonna invent a word. We can do that, you guys know that. <laughs> That's how everything gets invented. We just fuck around and find out. But I vote. We apostrophize you guys into yeah, I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, eyes. It's like Y apostrophe U Y S. So fast. You see, it took me a couple seconds to explain it, but if you think about the long-term collective benefit of having this within our nomenclature, this is gonna be profoundly useful, let me tell you guys. Let me tell you guys, it's gonna be amazing. See that earth breaking, earth shattering. Got a new phone, man, and it barely fits in the tripod, so I'm just gonna set you guys down, okay? This has been a very interactive video, hasn't it been? I hope you hit that like button. Not for me, for the algorithm, but Hit it three times for me, because if you hit it twice, you're going to unlike it, but re-like it for me, please. That would be amazing. So, let's break it down, guys. There's a need for uh, grounding with that series square this whole week. So, make sure you're touching the earth and make sure you're loving the earth. Because she's alive, you're alive. You guys have an umbilical cord on the astral plane, so you're going to want to put your lay on the earth. And, man, she's going to give you her nourishment, truly fuck around and find out you gotta take you don't gotta take my word for it. you can have an experience but finding joy in the earth is what i intuited so fuck around and find out man but today and tomorrow if you happen to be watching this the day after i've posted it the moon is in leo we don't usually have to spend too much time on this because 
the moon trains this change sign about every two days, roughly. But with the moon in Leo, take center stage. Enjoy getting out there, getting after it. Express what's on your heart. Do your part. Every time I find a rhyme, I just give it to you. It doesn't have to make sense. Shout out Mike Pence. We aren't gonna really shout him out again because I don't really get political like that, but you see what I meant. Quit this job and become a rapper. That's the Libra Moon card. That's what's on my heart, but let me stop. <laughs> okay, so this Leo Moon day <laughs> and tomorrow, which would also be a Leo Moon day, it's about feeling the love you have for yourself. Most definitely. Why don't you create something? I don't care what you create. I care, I do care, but it's up to you. I'm not gonna dictate or put limitations, like have fun creating what makes you happy. I will just, the reason I'm saying this kind of, I wanna get into what I mean. I think some of you are already intuiting, but let me tell you from a person who has fifth house Capricorn, sometimes I feel like I don't wanna create unless it's useful. So here I am making this video and I know it's gonna benefit a lot of people. So that gives me incentive to do it, but it's like, I'm also trying to partake in that element of this where it's a personal expression, you know? Yeah, this is a collective responsibility, but it can be fun, you know what I mean? So I want you to enjoy shit, man. Don't make life so damn serious that you can't create something because you are the creator. And this is really important because we do have planets still, we got a lot of stuff in Leo, truly. We're not gonna talk about all of it, but we have Venus, we got Mars, we got Pallas Athena, and we got Black Moon Lilith, all creeping their way through the fixed fire constellation. So, man, the lion is roaring. The mouth is open. And you may need to jump in, or you may need to close that mouth. I don't know what that means, truly, because I'm just speaking from the heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> but create something and find joy in whatever it is you're doing. Show love. I love you guys. Also, don't take shit personally. That's another thing about the Leo is pride goeth before the fall and pride might be kinda high. Oh my. There's a depth of feeling right here, man. Today, because the moon is going through the beginning of Leo, what's also made today a little bit interesting is that the moon is crossing the opposition with Pluto and Capricorn. So the moon and Pluto are looking at each other like that. You know, I'm the, I'll be Pluto, you be the moon. And we're like, and I just be, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. So what that literally means with the moon opposite Pluto is like, man, there's a depth of feeling in the world right now. And what that means is a whole bunch of things, spectrums of possibilities. Like this could be highly fucking uncomfortable, truly with the moon, <laughs> you know, breaking the, uh, the full Pluto phase. A need to transform emotionally emotional rebirth this could be highly charged responses maybe even from an unconscious level so that's crazy it's something to think about but it's something we can't even because it's unconscious sometimes you might literally kind of feel unsafe during hard pluto aspects and i will tell you guys right before i shot this video let me tell you with the moon opposite pluto I was about to get out the car and get in the park and I was like, damn, why does why does my solar plexus feel like it's engorged or some shit? I had so much on my heart. I literally felt like I was about to have a I don't have panic attacks, but I felt like damn. I've had a couple. I know what they are and what they feel like and how bad they can be. But dude, I was like, this feels like I'm getting to one. And I'm not really like I'm vibing today, man. But what I had to do is sit down and meditate for about 30 minutes. And put some Reiki energy and just move, do some breath work and clear out my heart. So with the moon doing this, because of the way timing works and how it's going to have peaked in that opposition by the time you're watching this, you might have already been forced into an emotional rebirth within the last day. You know, when you can use this video as timing. I just want to say it was June. Damn, what time is it? Fuck. Is it the 20th? I wrote everything is 29 degree Gemini. That doesn't answer it for a lot of y'all, but it's like, I'm gonna post this the day I shoot it. So it should say it on the video, what day it is. That's my bad, y'all. This is episode two, and we clearly have lacked preparation, but 
Work in progress, man. Slow, steady work is better than no work at all. Can I get an amen? Amen. So another thing that you can think about when it comes to the moon opposite Pluto is like with this emotional rebirth, this can create a lot of power and a feeling of control. And that can be a tremendously good thing. On a more neutral level, this is going to be feeling more in tune with the world, for better or for worse. That's the opposition. So this could be deep peace, profound peace. Like, wow, I am one with the universe. Oh my, you know, that can be a moon Pluto thing. Another thing that this talks about is revealing the secrets of the past. Moon Pluto. Conflict resolution. But definitely deep peace. When that surrender is accomplished, deep peace. Very cool. And I just want to say, I hope some of y'all are noticing this, why I keep bringing this up, but... When the moon is concerned, this reflects the past because this is the water element. This is the intuitive part of the world. This is the vibrational part of the world, the etheric plane, the water element. So wherever that is concerned, we get to see the vibrations that were already there anytime we participate with it. And this is what cancer energy is, is cardinal water connecting to water. So when we connect to water, we're basically going to be intuiting what was already there before we connected to it, right? Like yes or no, it's a yes, you know what I mean? So that's why the past is concerned because what happened before, and this is why cancer is correlated to comfort, why it's correlated to security, to safety. Cancer is angular, the, the Aries, for first and fourth house. The first house is your birth. So it's like one consequence of the birth and you'll see this through the angles. The fourth house is the family. Quite literally, if you think about it, how the fuck were you born? Mom, dad. I mean, for the most part, mom, you know? So it's like, boom, there's mom at the bottom of the chart. And from the first instant of your life, you will have her to refer back to, even on an unconscious level. That is the past. So I feel like I drove the point home and if I haven't drilled it hard enough, you've gotten part of it to unravel your mind. Confirmation. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. That's the water element. But let's talk about Mercury now. Just remember, Mercury governs the mind. Mercury is how we think. Mercury is how we process information. And it's how we communicate on all levels. And Gemini is home for Mercury. So this has been a very mental month and a very high speed way of living life during Gemini season can also be very fun, exciting, and very open-minded when Gemini is concerned. So for the rest of this week, for the most part, Mercury is going to just be flying through Gemini very quickly, as it does. It's kind of appropriate. So this is fast-paced, mental acuity, a want, a desire, and kind of a need to communicate and to be stimulated. You may, you may kind of see a lot going on. Distractions might be kind of high. Guard your focus, man. Your mind is your most powerful weapon, and it is the world you wield, truly. All is mind. The same substance your mind perceives is the same substance your mind is generated from. So remember, you can bend this world to your will when you start from the mental plane. And that is just the air element, and to truly be a Wiccan, you're gonna need to wield the fire, the water, the earth as well to bring the quintessence of spirit. Do you feel me? I just wanted to say, guys, I started a new business. I started a new business. MarkDavidMeyer.com. I lucked out and I got my name as my domain. My name is my name. So readings, mentorship, etc., all on MarkDavidMeyer.com at this point. So make sure you check that out. It's very cool. Let me know what you guys think. I think it works a lot better than Linktree for centralizing everything I got going on. I feel like the flow is pretty good. So I would like to know what you guys think of that. I digress. Let's get back to the uh, programming. What's really interesting about this week is like I said, Mercury is going to be going through Gemini for the most part of it. But at the very end of this week, last couple of days, Mercury will make its ingress into Cancer. It just flies through Gemini for real. So what we have to look forward to, and we'll talk this deeper next week, is that Mercury in Cancer is really emotional intelligence. And that's a really broad way of putting it, but I wanna put a Leo Mercury title to it. 
and we can break it down. <laughs> the emotional intelligence is really gonna be about, you know, speaking from the heart, maybe a more gentle way of communicating, noticing and perceiving those subtle nuances, the emotional factors, seeing the vibration between things. This might look like heightened empathy within communication, but either way that goes, this is gonna mean making a, spe making a space for the feelings within your world, truly making space for your feelings. You might also be thinking about the past right now, even with these retrogrades we got, but more so when Mercury moves into Cancer, like we already talked about, that's probably gonna mean thinking about the past, even if Mercury is direct. Reorganizing some things, you know? This might look like nostalgia, thinking about what used to bring you joy. This means your imagination might be mingling with your memory at this point to make something really beautiful. I sure hope so, man. That would be awesome. So let's talk about Venus and Mars. And these two are conjunct for the most part. They're not too far away from each other. And Venus just represents love and appreciation and beauty and even how we relate to self and then others. And Venus and Leo just means a love for attention, a love for love itself, a love for joy, excitement, a need to create, a need to feel special. Venus could also be your needs. So I just wanna say Venus and Leo means you need to feel special. And if you don't recognize your specialness, man, it's going to be awfully hard for other people to do that as well. So like I said, man, with this, it's kind of a Ven uh, Leo stellium with Venus, Mars, Pallas, and Lilith. Pride goeth before the fall, man. And if you demand things of the world that you are not providing within yourself, you have no business doing that, bro. And you can get a lot of blood on your hands, a lot of karmic debt on your account by jealousy, narcissism. You know, negligent action. We have to be compassionate in our action. And really, you know, empathy is false if we don't hold it for ourselves first. And I just find that when it comes to jealousy, which is a very important Leo thing, it might not sound that indirect, I hope, that we're talking about jealousy now when it comes to Leo, because this is all about the ego, the pride. Where jealousy is concerned, this is kind of like an assumption that because somebody has a thing or a quality that you desire that you somehow can't have it and for a person to be a good person what business do they have basically shitting on somebody that has something cool it's denial when you're jealous of somebody you end up shitting on them like man i don't like the way she dresses or fuck his nice car man you know type shit it's like casting down the people that have something that you value. And if you see yourself as a good person, it's like you should empathize for that person. Have the empathy for yourself to realize that other people winning is not a threat. That's real empathy for yourself. It's to be so secure in yourself that when others win and succeed, that makes you happy. Because you don't believe in scarcity. You believe it's abundance. Scarcity is an illusion, man. And a lot of us really fail because we set our targets too fucking low, man. We might set a subpar target, obsess the fuck over it, it won't manifest, and then get bummed the fuck out. It's like, dude, success is a journey. And you get to mold and shape your character as you go. So you have to really acknowledge yourself every step of the way. And give yourself permission to fail. Give yourself permission to grow. I want to just say this, y'all. If you're still following me, if you are not contradicting yourself, you are not growing. So you have to be able to humble yourself and be able to accept yourself to grow. And sometimes realize that the ego will get in your way. We need the ego and we're learning to maneuver it. It's basically like a vehicle. It's like your pilot ship, you know? The world is your mirror. And what that's really gonna say is that if you're paying enough attention to the way that you react to the world, not what the world is doing, and not even the way you're acting in the world, but the way that you are reacting to the world, somewhere in between those things. If you look at the way you're reacting to the world, you're gonna be able to see your paradigms, yourself, all the ways that you create the factors of your existence. It lies in between. If you get to know yourself there, you're actually gonna have a lot of operative control over both parts. With great power comes great responsibility. So, What's crazy about this Mars and Leo though? Oh yeah, because that was really 
a conversation from Venus, guys, was that if you don't fucking love yourself, man, you might do some bullshit things out of fear and spite or jealousy. And if you don't love yourself, you can't love others. That's your message. If you don't love yourself, you can't love others because the world is unable to give you what you are not giving yourself on some level. So that's when leave it on principle, you should see what I'm saying because there's times when you can only give yourself the energy and then the world will be able to fulfill that spot for you. But you gotta be able to meet yourself on vibration. What is your entitlement? And spirit, spirit told me to ask that and what I'm told as soon as I said that was your entitlement is the title you give yourself. And that's definitely something to think about. I'm going to be thinking about that shit. But uh, let's get to Mars, man. Because that was pretty heavy. But also pretty fun and pretty powerful. And that'll definitely lighten your world up. If you see what I'm saying, you'll be up. You'll be up here, man. It is Mr. Meyer. With the fire. And share ideas and take that bitch higher. So there's a lot of desire, a lot of drive. It is time to create with Mars and Leo. A lot of power and one thing that's kind of interesting is mars is applying to a square to uranus in taurus and this means that there is a lot of power and it's a lot of forward thinking action some of this energy might be misdirected and what's interesting about revolution guys is that this requires things done that have never been done before but precedent trumps principle every single time and time and time again, again so you got to watch out for that shit because if you're so ahead of your time, you might lose everybody. And then you're not even ahead of your time. You're actually kind of far behind. Does that make sense? It's fuck, bro. I've been that person where you think you're leading the group and you turn around, there's nobody there. At all. So fuck. Are we really following the leader or are they glorifying their independence? For what reason? You have to pay your dues and function off results. Ideals are only as good as the foundation and reality that could support it. That's dope. But if you forget that, man, you may feel like the world owes you something or that people are not cooperating with you or trying to interrupt you. And then you might actually have the issue. Oh, damn. Oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> so, uh, grab a tissue. <laughs> this one rhyme. So, uh, the, the meaning and the messages, take it a day at a time, man. Channel this energy in a logical way. You gotta have a plan. Make it make sense. Measure twice and cut once. Hey, if you're gonna chop a tree, this is a different example. If you're gonna chop a tree, I want you to spend 90% of the time sharpening your ax, man. Don't do like 95, don't do 99 if it's like a time thing, because you, you don't wanna like, waste resource but at the same time the, the message is that man, the mind is way stronger than the body and we're going to be seeing this because there's going to be a lot of ideas going through the body with this mars square uranus you may feel pulled in a shit ton of directions man but the priority with leo taurus is going to be about building peace and release and Jupiter's in Taurus, and we broke this down in the last video, so I encourage you, if you want to get deep into it, it's about the metaphysics of money and building a spiritual connection with abundance and growth. And that's in the last Mars Day with Mark. We went into pretty good depth. It is still going to be in the same degree. So what's interesting about this week is that on our last new moon in Gemini, over the last week, Saturn went into retrograde. So Saturn retrograde takes about like a third to a half of the year. And Pluto takes a, roughly about the same. And uh, these are both retrogrades, the two retrogrades we have. And quite honestly, guys, the way that these two interplay with cycles is as complex as it fucking gets, truly. And I'm not, tr I'm not bullshitting. Trust me, we could take time to break this down culturally and psychologically and relationship and business and all types of shit. But I just want to say from an archetypal standpoint, in a more direct way as well, this is really about the redistribution of karma and the rebuilding of things. And in another way, you reap what you sow. Saturn retrograde can be, I mean, it is truly a neutral thing, but it can actually be seen as quite a positive thing because this might look like some of the 
the limitations and the pressures that you're feeling are really being eased up on you. You know, if you've been putting good seeds in the universe and you've been working really hard, you've been disciplined, responsible, and you've been obstinate in a positive way, yeah, you're gonna thrive during the Saturn retrograde. You won't feel the pressure of building your dreams, man. Things might just start falling onto your lap. A lot of y'all who've been feeling that lag, like where the fuck are the fruits of my labor? They're coming very soon with the Saturn retrograde. You're about to get a check from the universe, for real. But um, for some people, it's time to pay the piper and the universe isn't gonna buy the bullshit anymore. So you're gonna have to pay the fuck up. And if you come up short, you can go to esoteric jail for all I care, for real. My aunt don't give a fuck at all. Some of y'all who wronged Mark David Meyer, I'm gonna see real soon that I'm the fucking truth. Somebody's like, damn, who hurt me? You'll see real soon. Some of y'all already know, but you'll see real soon. In your personal lives, collectively and socially, lies aren't fucking being bought anymore by the universe. Secrets are being revealed. You can lie to yourself, you can lie to other people, you can't fucking lie to God. Woo! I feel my moon opening. Give it time, guys. We got a lot of blessings on the way, a lot of peace is coming. And things are falling into place, but it also kind of feels like things are crashing and colliding. I don't know about y'all, but that's my world. That's how I'm seeing things. But I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm seeing the light now. And sometimes if you see no light, this is really Lilith and Leo energy. Sometimes if you see no light at all, you might be the light. And it's time for you to shine. And I have a video on my profile on YouTube called The Dark Night of the Soul. And that really, I think on a deeper level, explains the Lilith Leo archetype, because that's really deep and profound and I would love to go into it more. But if you're feeling me, what I just said, check that out, man. What's beautiful about this week is it's the first quarter moon. Once we get from Sun Cancer, Libra moon, about a week, we'll be halfway through the, we'll be a quarter way through the lunar cycle, then we'll hit the halfway at the full. So we're waxing, we're planting seeds in the universe, guys. So as I'm wrapping this video up at about 33 minutes, I just want to say focus on your blessings. Focus on the things that you want to create and you get what you pay for. Be loving, be honest. Take time to calculate your direction. Focus on purpose. And then I just really encourage you, if you're listening to me, set your goals 10 times higher. Don't set a subpar target because you'll suffer severely. Really go after more than you think you're capable of because chances are, you are fucking way more capable, okay? And then I want you to work 10 times harder. 10 times higher, 10 times harder. Shout out to Greg Cardone, 10X rule. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. F with your boy. Uh, I keep turning the thing, but you know, because the thing's not even on the tripod. But please leave me some interaction. I love and appreciate you guys' time and attention. Stay well, stay blessed. Leave me a comment. Share this video to somebody who would benefit from it. I really appreciate you guys. All the links are in the bio. SimplifiedAstrology.com or MarkDavidMeyer.com is now the one to really do the booking and the mentorship and then the readings. So blessed be, blessed we. Yes, indeed. And try to understand your responsibilities and things are going to get a lot easier for you. If you find a will, there's going to be a way. O to the K. Take your time. Find the love. I'm like literally trying to stretch it to three, 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 three. O to the we.